Well, let me greet you again today in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and say how delighted we are that you are part of Wednesday in the Word with St. Paul Baptist Church. I want to declare again that this is a day that the Lord has made, and it is ours to rejoice and be glad in it. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Again, I am Bishop Lawrence Kirby, Senior Pastor of the St. Paul Baptist Church in Racine, Wisconsin. And I'm so thankful that you decided to be a part of this word ministry today. Let me encourage you, would you please push the share button and share this word uh, with friends and family. Uh, we're studying this for year, the entire year, on discipleship. And I'm talking now through this season about some of the basic doctrines of the Bible and what it is important that we believe and teach from the Holy Scriptures. So I invite you to be a part of this, but also I encourage others to be a part of this as well. I want to encourage you to be a part of our Sunday morning worship each and every Sunday, 1123 Center Street, Racine, Wisconsin is the address. And we are in worship here at 8 a.m. and 11 a.m. We do practice uh, uh, various protocols, wearing masks, Social distancing, you know, but this variance, things are changing. Look like every day, but we still encourage you to sanitize your hands. We still encourage you to wear a mask. The words of the old church of the old saints of my grandmama Nim, as I say, an ounce of prevention is better than a pound of cure. So if this mask and taking a vaccination can prevent us from getting COVID, Let's just do it. Don't challenge everything. Let's just do it that we may, amen, be healthy and make sure that our loved ones around us are healthy. We don't want to take the COVID-19 to, to anybody else. Let me encourage you to support the ministry, the worldwide ministry to St. Paul Church, through your giving of tithes and offerings. I know you may hear the word tithe mentioned. It means 10% of whatever God gives you. You honor God by giving that to the work of the Lord. And of course, the St. Paul Baptist Church does the work of the Lord. We'd be so glad for you to download the Giblify app. Go to the place of St. Paul Baptist Church. You'll see a picture of me, Bishop Kirby, and of our church. You know you're at the right place. Give uh, an offering of thanksgiving, an offering of gratitude, a seed offering. Just encourage us to keep on teaching and preaching the word of the Lord. You can also put your gifts in the mail, 1120. Yes, I said 1120 Grand Avenue, Racine, Wisconsin. If you live in the Racine area, you can call our church, 262-632-1467. And one of our leaders will be glad to come by and receive your gifts for the ministry of the church. Again, we are so happy you're part of this ministry, and we pray God's blessings upon you, 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 and you. At this time, we'll be led in prayer by our own beloved Deacon Griffin. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Uh, today is a day that the Lord has made. Um, before I uh, lead us in prayer, I just want to um, give a quick scripture. Um, it's something that's been on my mind uh, a lot the last week or two, and so... Um, it, it speaks about kindness. So in Ephesians 4, verse 32, it said, Be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, as even as God in Christ forgave you. And, and for me, um, it, it's, it reminds me of just to do the little things um, that we can do to um, encourage one another or lift each other up. I mean, most of those things don't really cost anything for us to... Um, you know, give somebody a, a compliment or give somebody a hug, a smile, and, and those little things have the power to um, impact somebody's life in a tremendous way. Um, my Sunday school teacher used to say, never under, underestimate the power you have to change somebody's life. And so doing those little acts of kindness can um, just turn somebody's day around, and which could turn somebody's life around. So with that being said, um, let us bow our heads. Father God, I, I thank you for another opportunity to come before you, Lord. Father, we thank you for just allowing us to see another day, Lord. 
Father, I thank you for all of those that are tuning in to watch this Bible study, Lord, and, and I, I thank you for this platform, Lord. Father, I just ask that you just continue to watch over us, Lord, and continue to keep us close to you, Lord. Watch over Bishop and First Lady, Lord, and, and prop them up wherever they may be leaning, Lord, as they continue to do your work, Lord. Father, I just ask um, a special blessing for our sick and shut-in list, Lord. Father, you know whatever people may be facing, Lord. We, we know you know it all, Lord. You, you are the great I am. And so we just ask that you look in on them and touch them from the top of their heads to the bottom of their feet, Lord. Um, heal them wherever they may be in need, Lord, and, and just continue to touch them. Father, I ask those that a blessing for those that, that may be affected by this pandemic, Lord, whether um, it's their health or, or finances or the loss of loved ones, Lord. I just ask that you just touch them right now and just, just let them know that they don't have to go through this by themselves, Lord. Just continue to um, be with them and, and, and guide them, Lord, um, whether, whether they're struggling with any kind of um, mental anguish, Lord, during this time, Lord, I just ask that you just continue to lift them up, Lord. Um, Father, I just ask that you watch over our children, Lord. Just continue to touch them, Lord. Um, even though it may not seem as difficult now as it was, Lord, they, they, they still suffer, Lord. And, and we just ask that you just continue to encourage them and, and let them adjust to the new normal, Lord, with this pandemic that's going on. Father God, I just ask that you just continue to um, watch over our leadership, Lord. You know, our, our governors, our mayors, our, our presidents, Lord, just continue to let them make the best decisions that they can for your people. Not in their best interest, but in the interest of your people, Lord. Last but not least, Father, I just ask that you touch those that, that may not know you like we know you, Lord. Let yes, us Lord. let yes, us be Lord. beacons for you. Let us go out and, and prick those hearts and touch those minds and, and plant those seeds, Lord, so that we can draw them closer to you, Lord. You know, just like I said in the scripture, Lord, you forgave us. So, Lord, let us just um, be examples, Lord. Let our actions speak louder than our words, Lord. And let us just bring people to you, Lord. And we know that if we do that, Lord... Everything will be all right, Lord, because as long as you're in it, it's going to be yes, it's going to be yes. positive. It's going to be fruitful, Lord. Father, I thank you for your darling son, Jesus, for him standing in that gap so that we can have this relationship with you, Lord. Yes. Um, if it wasn't for the sacrifices he made and the sacrifice that you made, Lord, we wouldn't be able to come to you and, and yes. lay our problems at your feet, Lord. Yes, so we Lord. thank you for that, Lord. We thank you for the many blessings that you keep pouring upon us, Lord, and we ask all the blessings in Jesus name I pray amen again thank you so much for being a part of Wednesday in the word wonderful Wednesday coming from the St. Paul Baptist Church in Racine Wisconsin I do want to talk today uh, about a subject that has interested me for a long time it is a Bible or a biblical doctrine so uh, what I'm going to talk about today and share with you today get your Bibles get your Bibles get your Bibles this is Bible study. This is the Word of God. It's not what Kirby says. It's what the Word of God says. You got your Bibles. You know I drill. Each and every time we come together, you got your Bibles. Repeat after me. This is my Bible. This is my Bible. God's Holy Word. God's Holy Word. It is a lamp under my feet. It is a lamp under my feet. It is a light under my pathway. It is a light onto my pathway. I will hide His Word. I will hide His Word. In my heart. In my heart. That I might not. That I might not. Sin against it. Sin against it. I will read it. I will read it. I will study it. I will study it. I will meditate on it. I will meditate on it. And I will pray. And I will pray. That God. That God. Will help me. Will help me. To do to do what is written there what is written there in amen praise the lord thank god he left us a guide for time to take us to eternity and uh, the doctrine that we want to talk about uh today as i mentioned let me mention again is a doctrine of sanctification the doctrine the biblical doctrine of sanctification so when we use the word sanctification or sanctified Biblically, it never refers to a particular church and never to a denomination. I know during uh, the season we live in for these last several years, we've identified the word sanctification or sanctified to a certain segment, uh, amen, of what we call the Christian church. And, and we, sometimes we equate the word holiness or Pentecostal. Uh, with the word sanctified, but biblically speaking, it has absolutely nothing 
to do with a denomination or with a particular church or congregation you might attend or be a part of. Now, I labored in ignorance a long time. Uh, when I was growing up, I grew up in uh, the part of the, the church that we call a Baptist church, a body of baptized believers in Jesus Christ. That's what we mean when we use the word Baptist. We mean we are a body of baptized believers in Jesus Christ. We're saying we believe in believer's baptism, that we are saved by faith. And once we're saved by faith, we're going to follow the Lord Jesus Christ as an act of obedience in water baptism. When I grew up, there was what we called the Methodist Church. It's what we called the Baptist Church. It's what we call the Church of God in Christ. No, excuse me. The Church of Christ or the Presbyterian Church. And then there was this little church on the side over there that, that was Pentecostal. Sometimes Church of God in Christ. Sometimes apostolic, sometimes church of God. There are many different flavors. And we would say, now that's the sanctified church over there. And the sanctified people attend here. But we're not sanctified. Misunderstanding. Misunderstanding. That particular line of thinking is nowhere taught in the scriptures. I remember they used to tell me when I attended uh, a particular Pentecostal church, uh, Kirby, you ain't got it all. You seeking and you searching. Uh, you might be saved, but you ain't got the Holy Ghost. Of course, according to the Bible, that's, that's, that's impossible for you to be saved without having the Holy Spirit because it's the Holy Spirit that convicts us of our sins in the first place mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and convince us that Jesus is the Savior right. and draws us to him and after that, it is the Holy Spirit that takes up residence in the life or the heart of every believer. And that is what saves us. The Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, has his part in salvation. Now, if he is in my heart, if he's in your life, if he's taking up residence there, he is the one who sanctifies us. Joining a church being a part of a particular denomination does not sanctify you. Let me just uh, share a few words of doctrine with you. Uh, sanctification, we believe that sanctification is a process by which according to the will and the word of God we are made partakers of his holiness. I said it's the process by which according to God's word, God's will, and God's way, we who were sinners are now saved and we become partakers of his holiness. It's not mine, not my righteousness. It is his holiness. And we believe that this process of becoming partakers of his holiness, we believe that it is a progressive work, which means that it goes on continuously. There is no such thing as saying, I was sanctified. Mm -hmm. If you were, you still are being, because sanctification is a process. It begins at regeneration. The moment I am saved, the moment you are saved, that's when the work of sanctification begins. And it continues in the heart of every believer, in the hearts of every believer, all believers, by the presence and power of the Holy Spirit. So I am being sanctified daily as I live the Christian life because the Holy Spirit is present and His power is at work in my life. Now the Holy Spirit is there in the life of every believer doing several things. He's there as a sealer. 
He seals our salvation, uh, which means that we cannot be lost because the seal of God has been placed on us and in us through the person of the Holy Spirit. And the Bible teaches us, we'll bring this out in Scripture, that we're sealed until the day of redemption. When we're being sanctified, it means the Holy Spirit will help us to live a life of self-denial. Of self-denial. I cannot always do what my flesh tells me to do. God has given me and you and every believer the Holy Spirit. And part of what he does in our lives is to help us to deny ourselves. Oh yes, we have to crucify the flesh look like on a daily basis. Jesus said, if any person will come after me or be my disciple, he must first deny himself and take up the cross and follow him. If we are sanctified, we live a life of self-denial. We cannot always give in to our desires and our weaknesses. God has put his Holy Spirit in us. The Holy Spirit is there as the power of God to help me do what I said I couldn't do and to stop me from doing that which I ought not to be doing. And so he is there. He is there watching. Yes, yes. The Holy Spirit helps us to be watchful. And that word watch really means alert. Amen. If you got the Spirit of God in you, you ought to be alert at all times. Don't fall asleep in this evil time. Be alert and be watchful. The same Holy Spirit is in us, helping us to pray like we ought to pray. And if we can't pray like we ought to pray, the Holy Spirit interprets our prayers, takes them up to God for us, and intercedes for us before God. Amen. We are sanctified because the Holy Spirit is at work in our lives. The word sanctification is very important in the work of God. Matter of fact, the word is used, I'm told, 1,066 times in the scripture. And when I say sanctification, I'm talking about holiness too. Those two are often, are often interchanged one with the other. Sanctification or holiness. I'm being sanctified. I'm living a holy life. The Lord said, be ye holy because I am holy. The Lord said, follow holiness. Hebrews 12 and 14. Yeah, let me be sanctified. Now listen to this. Regeneration is the thing that changes our nature. I'm trying to explain to you process. 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 Regeneration changes our uh, put our, changes our nature. You know, I have the God nature in me now. I have the Spirit of God in me now. I, I'm no longer controlled by that old nature, that old man. The Bible says he's been crucified. If any man be in Christ, and Christ in him, he's a new creation. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are new. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. So when I am regenerated, which is a part of the saved life, then my nature is changed. The word regeneration is important when you talk about salvation and discipleship. Here's another word, justification. In justification, our standing is changed. Lord have mercy. My nature is changed when I'm saved. But then my standing is changed. When God looks at me now and looks at you now as a believer, he looks at you through the blood of Jesus Christ. Because what Jesus Christ's death, burial, and resurrection does for us is that it brings us justification. In other words, God covers our sin and he treats us as if we are righteous because we are covered by the blood of Jesus. So this whole thing of being saved means not only that I am regenerated and my nature is changed, but it also means I'm justified and my standing is changed. God no longer looks at us the same way because he looks at us, he sees his son, Jesus. Now, in adoption, our position is changed. 
we have studied this whole concept of salvation in the New Testament and sanctification. It has to do with adoption. When we are saved, we are now a part of the family of God. Is it a family? It is a family that we are born in by the Spirit of God. That's why Jesus says in Nicodemus in John 3, that which is born of the flesh is flesh, but that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. When we are spiritually born again, we are adopted into the family of God, and so our position changes. We're no longer sinners. We're now children of God. We're no longer sinners. We're now followers of God. We're no longer sinners. We're now people of the way. We're no longer sinners. We are the sanctified of God. Our position changes, amen, when we are saved through adoption. Now, I use the word adoption. Uh, I use the word justification. I, I use the word um, uh, regeneration. Well, let me give you another word. In sanctification, our character is changed. Mm. In sanctification, mm. our character is changed. Amen. You know, the saints of old used to say, I looked at my hands and they looked new. I looked at my feet and they did too. I had a new walk. I had a new talk. Only thing they were saying is God has sanctified me. God has indeed changed my character. They used to say, the things I used to do, I don't do no more. The place I used to go, I don't go no more. Why? Because you have been changed mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. by God himself. Your whole character has changed. Now the fruit of the Spirit, Galatians chapter 6, uh, chapter 5, I'm sorry, uh, it work in your life now because you have been sanctified. Now, when we talk about sanctification, uh, the Trinity, or the triune God, has his part to play in this whole concept of this whole doctrine of sanctification. The Father is involved in it. John 10, you want to read it? John 10 and verse 36. John 10 and verse 36, and I'm just reading a part of that verse, it says, and you of him whom the Father has sanctified. So if I'm a child of God, John 10, 36, then the Father has sanctified me. I did not sanctify myself. I did not get sanctified because I joined some denominational church. I got sanctified and so did you all the same way because God the Father sanctifies us. All right? Mm -hmm. John 17 and 19. John 17 and 19. These are the words of Jesus. And for their sake, I sanctify myself. So Jesus says, you're born again. You're going to be a child of God. You're going to be like me. I'm going to cover you. And that means I'm sanctified. That means you're sanctified. I'm sanctified. You're sanctified. That's the role that the Son has to do in it. Uh, and then the people, uh, uh, 1 Peter 3.15, 1 Peter 3.15, 1 Peter 3.15. And I'm only reading a portion of that verse, I think. But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts. But sanctify the Lord God in your heart. So I got to play a part. I've got to allow the Holy Spirit to come in me. i got to allow him to sanctify me because he will not sanctify me against my will or against my wishes. So I have to cooperate with the Holy Spirit. I have to allow him to sanctify me. God has given us free will, and he will not make us do anything we don't consent. Lord, I invite you to my heart. That's volunteer. Lord, I want you to take up residence in me. That's volunteer. Lord, I give you control of my life. I'm volunteering and surrendering myself to the Lord because I want to be sanctified. Let me say it again. Sanctification is the work of the Holy Spirit. Sanctification is the work of the Holy Spirit. Sanctification, being set aside, being holy, being separated for God's use, Mm -hmm. 
is a work of the Holy Spirit. Well, let me see. Let's read a few more scriptures with the time that remains. 1 Thessalonians, I think I want to look at 4 and 3. 1 Thessalonians 4 and 3. You got it? 1 Thessalonians 4 and 3. For this is the will of God, your sanctification, that ye should abstain from sexual immorality. So it's the will of God for you and me and all of us to be sanctified and abstain, because this verse talks about sexual immorality, but it really has a reference to any sin and anything that displeases God. That the Holy Spirit wants to sanctify me and set me apart for God's use. Lord have mercy, that I might abstain from doing those things that I should not be doing as a child of God. That's 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and verse 3. You get that? Mm -hmm. Well, let's read Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 18. Kind of journeying back and forth through the Bible right now. Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 18. I guess I should have marked these scriptures before, so I don't have to be thumbing through the Bible so much. But uh, Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 18. Proverbs chapter 4 and verse number 18. But the path of the just is like the shining sun that shines even brighter up on the perfect day. So God is shining in my life, hallelujah, leading me to that day of perfection, and is shining in my life every day. It is a process. Mm -hmm. It is a process. Sanctification and holiness is a process. And I don't know that we ever get to the place where we're done with being sanctified, it's progressive and it's continuous. It's not a final act. I got sanctified and that's it. No, I am progressively being sanctified. The light is steadily shining in my light. Philippians chapter 2. This is Bible study. It's looking at the scriptures. Philippians chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2, let's look at verse 12 and verse 13. Philippians chapter 2, verse 12 and verse 13. You got it? Mm -hmm. Therefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, Paul is saying, working out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Process. Working. Work, 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 work. Do what God has called you to do. What God has set you apart to do. Uh, you see that right there? Don't you? Verse 13. For it is God who works in you both to will and to do for his own pleasure. The Holy Spirit is taking up residence in your life. That he might help us to do the will of God. And do what pleases God for his own pleasure, it said. Do what pleases God. Okay, Ephesians chapter 1. Ephesians chapter 1. Again, verse 12 and verse 13. You got it? Ephesians chapter 1, verse 12 and verse 13. That we who first trusted in Christ should be to the praise of his glory. In him you, you also trusted. And if you, after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also, having believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. Remember I told you the other day, I mean earlier in our discussion, that one of the works of the Holy Spirit is to seal us. You know why the devil can't get me and take me to hell? Because I've been sealed by the power of God. 
If, God, if the devil could get me and send me to hell, it would mean he has more power than God. And he does not have more power than God. No, God is the only one that's all power. And when God saves us, he seals us. Now, this is not a good illustration for many of us, I'm sure, who are younger. But when I grew up, uh, and, and people still do, in fact, used to can certain kinds of veggies and, and fruits and pimples and radishes and all of that. Matter of fact, the stuff you buy in the store in the jar with a top on it, the reason why it's kept until you eat it is because it's been sealed. What they do is they heat the jars or whatever it is, put the whatever it is in there hot, put the top on it as tight as it can. The top generally has a little rubber seal underneath it, and after a while, it seals. And what the seal means that it's not going to be contaminated. It's not going to go bad. It's going to be kept until you take the top off of it. Now listen, so when I'm saying what God does is he seals me. He seals us with the power of the Holy Spirit. So it becomes impossible for the devil to take us out of the hand of God. I know that's right. hard to believe, but the Bible says God has sealed us to the day of redemption. He has sealed us to the last day. And when God seals, you listen to me, you seal. Mm -hmm. You ain't got to trust yourself for this. Amen. Trust God for this. You're saved eternally because you're sanctified and you're holy and you've been sealed by the Spirit of God until the day of redemption. Let's look in now, uh, verse 4, I mean, chapter 4 of Ephesians, verse number 30, I believe. Still in the book of Ephesians. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom ye were, there it is again, mm. sealed for the day of redemption. Hallelujah. I rejoice in God today because he has done a complete work in the life of every believer and he has sealed us and protects us under the coming of the Lord himself. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Let's read one more scripture and then my time is gone. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, I believe, is what I want. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 21. Now he who established us with you in Christ and has anointed us in God, who also he sealed us and given us the Spirit in our hearts, as a guarantee. God guarantees me a place in heaven. God guarantees you a place in heaven where Jesus is forever and ever and ever. Why? Because he put his Holy Spirit in you as a guarantee. Hallelujah. To let us know that one day sooner or later we're going to be with him where he is. I'm just trying to teach today on the doctrine of sanctification. I want to take this up again next week based upon the word of God. But thanks be unto God, the Holy Spirit convicts us of our sins, convinces us that Jesus is Savior, draws us to the saving uh, blood of Jesus Christ, and then lives in us by taking up residence in us and sealing us to the day of redemption. Listen, my brother, listen, my sister. Maybe you're not a believer. Maybe you're not giving your life to Christ. Maybe you've not allowed God to come into your heart and save you. If so, my brothers and sisters, I want to give you an opportunity to accept the free and wonderful gift made possible through the death, the blood, the resurrection of Jesus Christ, the gift of salvation. All you have to do is invite him into your life. All you have to do is pray this simple prayer with me, wherever you are. Lord Jesus, I repent of my sins. I invite you to come to my life. I accept the blood you shed at Calvary as a covering for my sin. And I am saved because you're saving me right now. In Jesus' name, amen. Listen, if you pray that truck sinner's prayer, why don't you inbox me and let me know it. Call me, 262-632-1467. Otherwise, I'd love to, uh, for you to see us on Sunday. Uh, August 1st, 
uh, 7.45, excuse me, 8 o'clock a.m. worship, 11 o'clock a.m. worship. And Sunday is a special day because it's my birthday. I'm celebrating 68 years of life this Sunday. I'd love to see you or hear from you this Sunday, August 1st. And it is Communion Sunday here at St. Paul Church. So be sure to stop by the church, get your elements, or make sure you get some bread and some juice, uh, something to drink uh, with us, and partake of the communion on Sunday. May God bless you. Know that we're praying for you, and we're praying with you. If you want our special prayers in boxes, let us know what your special prayer request is, and we'll be praying for you, and for you, and for you. In the name of Jesus. Now may the grace of God our Father, the love of Jesus Christ, God's Son, and our Savior, the abiding presence of the precious Holy Spirit, go with you and yours, and your work, and your leisure, and your going, and your coming out from this day forward and forevermore. Amen. Amen. And amen.